one year after the latest haiku, when do you, where do you see the country heading? Well, from what the data tells me, the Thai economy is slightly doing a little bit better from the period just before the coup, but the outlook is not promising. Export growth is, has been negative for the first three months of this year, and private consumption investments are still barely above zero. So in the short run, it's unlikely that we're going to see any major improvement in the economy. But I've seen some promising reforms such as energy pricing reforms and um, um, the infrastructure upgrades that will kick in later this year. What is the most important argument you plan to make in this presentation? Think of a Thai economy as a, a person who's sick, old and broke. And what this economy needs is not just a few doses of morphine to keep it barely alive. What it needs is major surgeries to remove the tumors that have been killing its productivity for years. My point is this, even if this current government manages to get the growth engines started again later this year, it's unlikely that the chronic problems are going to go away in just a year or two. So. If this Thai government manages to um, maintain continuity of reforms and new policies to tackle these chronic problems and start to look ahead beyond four years, there's a good chance that the Thai economy might revive and can become the hub for the AEC. Do you have any specific policy suggestions? If so, to whom? Well, we've seen a lot of policies, a lot of grand policies by um, this current government in infrastructure upgrades. But what's still lacking, in my opinion, is much more effort in um, education policy, policy to um, improve governance and efficacy of the government, and policies to improve labor productivity. Another um, area that could be improved is um, investment. So this is a good time to improve um, the level of private investment in Thailand, given um, low interest rates and the access to credit that's available to the country right now.